Good morning, friends. It's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, uh, and it is good uh, for us to be together. I uh, received today as a gift, and I hope you do as well. A um, couple of things I want to share with you before we actually turn to Psalm 20 this morning. Um, <clears throat> the school Where you are, school may already have started. Uh, I know that it's getting ready to crank up for uh, Wilson County and we have as many questions as we do um, expectations, hopes, uh, dreams for this year, especially for our children and those uh, to whom we entrust them. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, here at Cook's we have uh, borrowed um, or stolen, uh, however you want to look at it, um, a best practice uh, from a sister congregation in Carrierville, um, Tennessee. Shout out, out to Carrierville uh, friends. Uh, PPE has been a big issue in our um, daily living now for uh, quite a few months. Uh, personal protective equipment. And those who work in hospitals and have been dealing with this virus, those who work in stores or in other places where um, customers, patients frequent, uh, we've worried about those things too because we want life to continue, but we also want to be safe. Well, spiritually speaking, there's a very important and critical even um, PPE that we can offer uh, for all of those who are impacted by education, whether it happens at home, uh, whether it happens virtually, whether it happens in a classroom with other students from other families. Uh, and so there's a, we, we've uh, borrowed their little card, uh, but we've also put some suggestions on the back. And so two things I want you to consider. Number one, beginning to pray even now, if you haven't already, begin to pray even now for um, the protection and the success of all of those who are impacted uh, indeed by um, a year of education. Now, so it's easy to think of students and teachers, uh, but what about cafeteria personnel? Don't forget our bus drivers and our um, uh, crossing guards. The, uh, with so many people come in contact with our children we want everybody to be safe and everybody to have what they need. Uh, this, so the first thing is to pray with us. The second thing is the our little card probably it serves more as an invitation for others to join us. So if you're in the Wilson County area uh, and you would be willing to grab a packet of cards and leave them in the places where you frequent, uh, we would love for you to invite all of Wilson County to be able to pray with us. And certainly, I, we're not the only one who have students and teachers and bus drivers, etc. Uh, so if you'd like to join uh, in with us, we have these cards available in packs of 20, I believe. Um, and so just swing by the church office Monday through Thursday. Uh, let us know if possible. Let us know that you're coming and we'll make sure that you've got a package of cards. Share it with your friends. Invite folks to be praying with us. Park and pray every day. So the thought is that even after the school year starts, when you're driving by, make a sacrifice of your time, your energy, and your thought life. Pull in very quickly, park, and spend about five minutes praying for all of those who are engaging with our children. And let's see what happens in the world around us. Okay, so today I want us to look at Psalm 20. There's one verse in particular that someone suggested uh, to us and honestly it's one of those I let the verse get separated for the name so sorry give us a shout out if you like what you hear or if you don't like what you hear and we'll uh, try to move in the direction that your heart was moving but I, I have found in looking at verse 4 <clears throat> uh, some really good news and some really um, well a hard pill to swallow so we have to look at the whole of the chapter uh, there are only nine verses and so we're gonna read all of them but before we get there I have to say that this springboards from our work yesterday in Proverbs 16 3 so I want you to think for a moment about God's plan for you remember a plan 
uh, in the Hebrew understanding, uh, that's the original language, and so the culture um, uh, through which the uh, Old Testament was written. And so plan can mean everything from design and intention to thoughts, but also then to the manner in which we live something out. Uh, so it's not just a list of things to do or a big goal we want to accomplish. What what are we talked yesterday about what our plans are? Well, so what's God's plan for you? I can remember in my uh, closing time in high school and even closing time uh, when I was working on my undergraduate degree that that seemed to be the weightiest question of all. Uh, as one who really wanted to follow Jesus closely, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? That was such a hard, I felt like all the pressure in the world to answer that question correctly. Uh, and I wish that I had had somebody, and maybe they did. I, I have to own that maybe I just wasn't ready to receive it, but I wish that somebody had been able to say to me in a way I could understand, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. What God wills for you, what God plans for you, is really much more simple than that. So let's say this, God's plan for us, God's intention, God's desire, uh, God's will uh, for us, God's purpose for us, all the thinking, um, if we can kind of humanize God that way, but all of the intent and will for us is that we work and serve we talked about that yesterday he's given us the work he has given us the business of cultivation he's also uh, created us in love for love jesus says this a lot he sums matter of fact all of the commands of god up into two that are very similar love god with all you have and with all you are love your neighbor the same way that you love yourself well, that means we got to understand what love is and some of us are still a little confused about that and then live abundantly that's what god says life is supposed to be and he god makes sure that there is abundance there we just got to learn the true meaning of that word too so work serve that's a, the attitude with which we do our work love and live abundantly that's basically what god is calling us to do. God wills us to do that. So it leads me to say, I, I don't know that God is so much worried about whether you do that as a teacher or a bus driver or a cafeteria worker or a pastor or an administrator in an office, um, whether you uh, stripe parking lots, whether you take people's garbage uh, from them and do something with it. I, whether you landscape, if you're an engineer, I, I don't know that that is the exact focus, except God cares about it. Now, we do have to say this, God has given us gifts. God's Holy Spirit has gifted each one of us with more than one gift according to our ability and our response to God. But we have uh, natural inclinations, shall we say, um, and we also have abilities, some that we've learned and perfected and some that just kind of come natural. We also have passions uh, within us. Some of us uh, are animal lovers and some of us couldn't give one whit uh, about having a dog or a cat or bird or goat or anything close to us, but we have passions about us. We ha Each of us have unique personality. We all have unique personalities. We've all had uh, experiences, some that are similar to another's, uh, but many vary because of all the other um, factors, they're unique uh, to us. And all of those things, our gifts, our abilities, our passions, our personality, uh, the impact of our experiences, they all influence our work, how we serve, how we love, that we love, and how we live abundantly. That's God's plan for us, to know and live in all of that. Okay, so this psalm is going to ask us then, what's our plan? 
people. What is it that's in your heart? So a plan begins with thoughts that become beliefs or hopes. And then we remember yesterday we talked about kind of where our head is, then our body follows. What we mean is our eye-hand coordination drives the physical body. But what we focus our heart on, what, what we spend more time thinking about, then that's what's in our heart. And so I, I want you to hear with joy, but also with, uh, with some clarity now, uh, this beautiful Psalm. David wrote this Psalm and David, um, uh, at the time he was king. Um, uh, and so I don't, I don't know what kind of music this would be set to. You might want to spend some time thinking about that later because most of the Psalms were used as songs of praise or lament um, that invited the person hearing and participating to worship. So a Psalm of David, this is Psalm 20, and I'm gonna read the whole thing and then we'll go back to verse four. I pray that the Lord answers you whenever you are in trouble. Let the name of Jacob's God protect you. Let God send help to you from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. Let God recall your many grain offerings. Let him savor your entirely burned offerings. Let God grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Then we will rejoice that you've been helped. We will fly our flags in the name of our God. Let the Lord fulfill all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed one. God answers his anointed one from his heavenly sanctuary, answering with mighty acts of salvation achieved by his strong hand. Some people trust in chariots, others in horses, but we praise the Lord's name. They will collapse and fall, but we will stand up straight and strong. Lord, save the king. Let him answer us when we cry out. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but six times in the common English translation of this beautiful psalm, six times, let God, that phrase appears. And it's not just um, a call from one person to another or to a congregation of people to allow God, um, but it's but that's part of it. We we have to allow, but we have to allow in two ways: giving God permission or um, giving God place in our life to accomplish those things uh, is absolutely necessary. Uh, God doesn't have to have our cooperation necessarily, but uh, God is not going to, um, I don't believe that God always just barges in and gets it done without, without our participating or uh, encouraging, allowing, partnering with God, especially in our own lives. But allowing it also means allowing the thought, allowing the truth that God will accomplish God's purpose. So let God six times. That's, that's what he says, let God. Uh, this is the interesting thing for me is uh, uh, the verse four uh, there. Let God grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Now, I know we started with what God's plan is, but David uh, ran into trouble when he wanted to do things his way instead of God's way. He'd seen that happen in Saul's life. He'd seen that happen in the whole Israelite army uh, when they came against Goliath and they hid instead of trusting in God's promise. He had seen this played out in small ways and in large ways again and again and again, and then made the same mistakes himself. And so the king knew what it was to be in trouble and to trust in things that were not trustworthy. Verse seven and eight help us read verse four a little differently. Verse seven. 
Some people trust in chariots, some in horses, but we praise the Lord's name. Well, isn't it kind of interesting that he doesn't say we trust in God? We praise the Lord's name instead of trusting in chariots, instead of trusting in horses. We, the implication is we praise God's name because we trust and we see that God is trustworthy again and again and again. Verse 8, they will collapse and fall, but we will stand up straight and strong. God is faithful. The implication again, that God is trustworthy and when we put our trust in God, then we know a measure of success. Our plans come to fruition. And so the call, my friends, is to consider, again, kind of like yesterday, what your plan is. I, I think there's a beautiful way in this verse four um, that we are invited with um, to have courage and to be completely honest. What is in your heart? So I want you to think for just a moment, and you may want to take more time to think later on, but what really is in your heart about yourself, about your health um, at every level, about your vocation, about your relationships um, with family, with friends, with those that you share work with? Uh, what are your plans? What is in your heart about your own sense of happiness or satisfaction in life? Uh, what is in your heart? What is your intention, your dream, your hope, your worry? What, what is in your heart about your impact and influence on all of life around you, particularly other human beings. What is in your heart about your relationship with God? Here's what I mean. In the very beginning, I said that this is a tough pill to swallow, a hard pill for, to swallow for us, is I believe verse four is absolutely true. But it's true for those who, uh, who love and trust in chariots and in horses the same way it is for those of us who trust in God. God will, God will grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. My friends, if we don't focus ourselves on the one whom we say we praise, if we don't trust in the one who gives us breath, who gives us life, who loves us more than we love ourselves, who loves us more than the person who loves us most does, if we don't commit ourselves to him like we learned in Proverbs 16, 3, we still get what's in our heart, but it may not be what you want in life. If you're worried about climbing the ladder, at work, that's what you're focused on. Uh, you, you may make some strides on those rungs, but doing it outside of the invitation to work and serve and love and live abundantly the way God has invited us to do, you may find that some of those rungs are very lonely and they have cost you more than you ever intended to pay. The same thing for family or relationships. Uh, the same thing for uh, the things that are more internal, like your own sense of happiness. You keep running after the things that the world says should bring happiness to you. And you'll find that you filled your heart with many more things that can't make good on their promises and there's no room for the promise of God. And so Psalm 24 can be the best news that you have heard in a long, long time. Or it could be the call to look in the mirror today so that you can receive it as good news because God will 
that's what verse 4 says God will grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans my prayer my friends is that each of us as individuals and us as a whole would claim the plan of God um, as our own life plan and that we worry first foremost maybe even only about the way the work that we do on a daily basis and the attitude with which we do it do we serve God do we serve one another or do we only serve ourselves love receive it give it how simple is that and live abundantly because that is God's promise some people trust in chariots and horses but we praise the Lord's name they will collapse and fall but we will stand up straight and strong the implication my friends in verses 7 and 8 is that we trust in the one whom we praise that's the call to awareness and clarity for the church I believe today you can't say one thing with your mouth and then live according to another truth without there being devastating consequences for you and for everybody who's looking at you may you be clear this day or begin the process of being clear about what is in your heart and may your heart belong to God let's pray together Oh Lord we fill our hearts and our minds or we allow them to be filled by so many things and some of them aren't of you it is a big muddy mess some days and then others we are very clear about who we are and whose we are and it's easy for us to see when we are choosing something other than the work you've given us when our attitude is not the one that you invite us to live in when we are not receiving or giving love when we are not living abundantly but we're worried about the scarcity of things some days it's very clear and some days we are so busy chasing after the desires of our heart that we forget that you're going to take care of it all oh. we struggle with this invitation lord to commit everything we do to you so that your plans and our plans become one that's the idyllic way the innocent way the perfect way the pure way you created life and we mess it up time and time again we are so grateful this day for redemption especially when we tell the truth about what's in our hearts oh god we got some stuff there that don't belong. Help us to be bold and brave, to name it. Don't hide from you and don't pretend it's not there, but name it for what it is so that it lessens, the, its power lessens, and we can let those things go, leaving room for all that you plan for us, too. May our plans and yours be one. Show us today, Lord, May we have courage to see today where there is a, a, a lack of harmony, where the things aren't the same between our heart and yours, that we may know your peace, that we may be able to praise you because we know of your trustworthiness, and may we trust only in you. We love you so much and are so grateful for another day to experience and extend grace, to experience and extend mercy, and to know a deeper measure of your love and love the same way. It's in the name of love himself, even Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. My friends, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. I'm trying to work out my faith and to, and to kind of own my own salvation as God's gift to me. And you being present with me enables me to do that. That's what we long for you to have too, is companionship and partnership in this journey of faith. Uh, if there's anything that we can do to help you in that, uh, please let us know. Know that we are praying for you this day and every day. See ya.